Hi guys, it's Mary again. So today I'm here to talk about a topic that haunt many teachers, trial lessons. So if you're not aware of the term, a trial lesson is a lesson that you offer usually for free. So the student can decide whether they like your teaching style or not. So why are trial lessons so important? Because obviously is the chance you've got to really get a new student, to retain this student, to make sure the student is going to be with you and is going to come back after the class. Okay, so what I did is I've put some tips together on how to make this big first impression and how to make sure the student will really want to have lessons with you. Okay, so going to first, first tip is make the students feel unique. This sounds a bit obvious, but I do know some teachers that they just treat students as numbers. Unfortunately, sometimes they don't like their jobs or, you know, they are having problems. So basically, don't treat your student as a number, especially if you are teaching private lessons. You don't want to ask them, oh, what's your level? What do you like? It's not like that. You really have to show them if they are with you, they are going to have a personalized treatment and they are going to have a personalized study, um, plan of study for them, for them to be sure it's worth to be with you. OK, so people are different, especially if they if they are from the same nationality, if they are same age or same level, it doesn't matter. We are all different and we want to be treated differently. So my students, I always make them feel that the lessons are just for them. I'm not repeating the same lesson with everyone. You know, this is for you. So ask questions. Yes, let them talk and let them feel important from the first minute they start talking to you. This leads to my second tip, which is what's their story? So of course, I'm not talking about the story of their lives. So I don't want to know, well, not the first lesson. I don't want to know about their parents, their childhood or this kind of stuff because we don't have time for this. But what's their story with the language you are teaching? So if you're teaching English, so have they had English at school? Did they like it? Lots of students, they come to me and they say, look, I hate English because my teacher at school was very bad, was very boring or she was very strict. So I don't see pleasure in the language. So it's your job to listen to them and to understand if they've got a big trauma. It happens sometimes, you know. Also, I used to say this. I used to um, I was trying to talk English, but someone laughed at me or stuff like that and they've got this big trauma so it is really important to understand why the student is there if it's a child a teenager not always they want to be there sometimes they are there because their parents told they 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 have to do it okay so if you understand the reason if you know their motivation so um my motivation is because i've got um an english girlfriend maybe so i want to be able to talk to her better or i'm going to prepare i have to prepare myself for an exam so motivations are different and it's going to depending on the motivation and the reason um your techniques are going to be different okay so this is going to make you stand out as a teacher to be different and to really understand what people need okay so ask them if they like the language what's their experience with the language if they, they've been to a school or to an academy or, or whatever okay so number three is ask them what type of memory they for well so students usually they are not going to know but they are going to see that you are a different teacher because you are talking about an aspect that no one ever asked them about so I don't know very well what type of memory I've got. So this makes them think, um, well, when I go to a place, do I follow better um, oral uh, or orientations or maybe I have to look at a map? So you make them think from the first lesson and they are going to see that they are going to know themselves better after talking to you of course as a student because we are not psychologists but if you understand if they understand how they learn better this is going to be a very good thing 
for the student and for you. Because if you know that they learn um, wave songs, of course, you're going to give them more songs. If you know they learn looking, you know, seeing things, you are going to use more visual clues. So it depends on the type of um, memory, the type of learning, you can kind of design a special program for this person. So make them feel they are going to improve themselves being with you. Okay, so let's see number four, which is give them positive feedback. This sounds obvious as well, but some teachers don't do it. They forgot, they forget to do it during the first lesson. What I do is um, before the trial lesson, I usually send an email with a test, very funny, simple, nice test. So I don't scare students at the first moment, uh, but just something, you know, usually I take a funny video for, from internet, make sure it's not a polemic one, you know, and it needs to be no, no controversial thing. Um, so basically just nice things, you know, very um, clear and nice things for them to start showing you their skills. So if you've got this knowledge prior to the first lesson, you've got something to analyze. If you don't, which is also okay, um, you've got this first 10 or 15 minutes of the lesson when the student is going to be talking about their memory, their um, story, their motivation, and you can try to analyze this part. Okay, so what you're going to do everyone has something good. So if you see this student is really, 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 his level is really low, of course, you are not going to lie. It don't, it, I'm not talking about, you know, I'm not saying you have to fake it, but try to get something good and talk about it. It might be um, a pronunciation thing, for example, well, I really liked the way you pronounced this word, or I really liked the way the structure you used here. So I can see your level is, from what I see, uh, it's basic, but I do think you are going to learn very fast because I can see good things here and good things there. So this is going to give students motivation to be with you because they can trust you. They can see you see good things at them and we are all humans and we all love people talking good things about us. So very important thing, give them this motivation so they can see themselves in a different way and they can feel comfortable talking to you. But at the same time, I do mention something that is not right. So what I tend to do, for example, at the moment, um, I'm teaching more Spanish speakers and Spanish speakers, because of their native language, they've got an issue, not all of them, of course, I'm not overgeneralizing, but usually they've got an issue with ED endings. So for example, instead of saying, I walked, they are going to say, I walked. Instead of saying, I worked, they are going to say, I worked right because they don't have this sound in the spanish language so of course it's a bit difficult so what i do is i get this little thing and then i say okay so let me just ask you one thing here i put maybe three verbs and i'm going to say well can you just read these verbs can you just read them aloud and when they say them wrong i say ah okay so you see this is said in a different way right so I, of course, I don't tell them you are making a mistake. No, it's not like that. But I show them the way they are pronouncing these words is not the right one. And we, we are going to work together on them. So that's the important thing. It's not about getting the student upset or, oh my God, yes, I'm, I'm terrible. Yes, I've been saying this wrongly my whole life. No, it's not about that. It's about showing the student that, look, I spotted something that no one ever told you, okay? And together, we are going to work on this. So, because it's very easy to go to YouTube or, you know, to buy books and try to study by themselves, but you are there to make a difference. So you are there to spot these little things, these individual things and tell them together, we can solve it. So this gives the student um, a sense of need. They, they feel they need you. I need her because if she told me I did this wrong and she's going to explain to me next lesson, we are going to look into it together. I really need her if I disappear. Oh my God, how, how is going to be my life with my ED engines, you see? So kind of let them feel they need you as well at the same time as they've got good things to show you.
Okay, so number six would be show then how your classes work. Very, very important thing because some students, they're not very um, keen on technology. You know, some of them are very, very young, so they don't really know how to manage a computer. I'm talking, of course, this case specifically about online lessons. But of course, you are going to tell them as well. If you've got face-to-face -face lessons, you have to, to tell them how the lessons are going to work, a bit about, um, about your methodology, uh, how the homework is going to, to be. So what I do here, I only teach online. So I show them, look, this is the platform. You don't have to do anything. I'm going to share the content with you. We are going to do the exercises together. Sometimes we are going to listen to a video or, or we are going to watch a video. We are going to listen to a song together. So you don't have to touch anything. You just have to enjoy, think, love, relax, and speak. That's, that's what you need. So it takes this pressure from them because sometimes they go like, oh my God, but do I need to download any materials? Do I need to um, any, any apps or any different things or tools? No, you don't need to do anything. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you the stuff. I'm going to send you the material. And also I'm going to share this material with you so you can, you can review it later. Also, I talk about the plan of study. So very realistic. So this is another very important thing. Um, so how, how is the homework going to work? Well, you work 40 hours per week, you've got a family, so maybe you are not going to be able to study English every single day. So let's together, let's kind of create a realistic program. So that's a fantastic thing because if in the first lesson you are creating something together, again, the student is going to think, well, I depend on her because I really need to have this plan. I really need to have, I've got my goals and she's the person that is going to help me achieve my goals. So basically do this together. Okay, so in your case, I think um, maybe you are going to have two or three hours per week for self-study. So what I'm going to do is look, no pressure. Um, I'm going to send you three emails, maybe a grammar topic, a vocabulary topic and a pronunciation topic, and you choose how you want to say them. So if you're feeling more like doing grammar today, start with the grammar email. If you're feeling more like, well, I'm, I'm up to, I'm, I'm for pronunciation today, you start with pronunciation. Okay, so of course this is going to depend. Some students are more responsible. Some students, of course, especially if they are, if they are teenagers, they are going to take an exam. You do need to be a bit more strict. Um, so it depends. It depends on what you've talked, um, what, what their parents told you. So it depends on loads of things, but let them know how things are going to work. Tell them what you expect from them. No pressure. But at the same time, you know, you are there, you are there to take the, the best out of them. So you need to be a bit organized and strict with your, your way of teaching as well. Okay, so going into seven, number seven, use a creative test to assess their skills. Um, so my trial lessons usually are 45 to 45 minutes to one hour. It depends on the student. If I see they, they are really enjoying, you know, talking, they are very comfortable talking. I just let them talk. I always um, kind of set one hour for the lesson. Okay. So what I do is the first part, as you, you say, is just talking, 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 talking about loads of different things. And the second part, I'm going to test them on some skills. So it's very funny. I just put the, the sound on YouTube so they can really feel it's something, it's something um, well, a, a bit serious. But my test is not um, grammar, very serious test. So what I do is I've got some slides. They are ready. So I've got, I think in total 20 slides with different activities. And I kind of feel the student, the first part of the lesson. And I go like, mm, so this one, maybe I'm going to test this person on grammar, or maybe I'm going to test this person on vocabulary. So I've got these options there and I, I choose what I want to do during the lesson, according to the student. Things that I love, I put some examples here. So for example, describing photos, nice, interesting photos, funny photos, not offensive, please be careful with the type of material you choose. 
But um, optical illusions are great because you can really, for example, if I tell them, mm, can you describe what, what do you see here? What, um, what is the appearance of this person? And they go, mm, teacher, this guy has no hair. So you know that they don't know the word bald. Um, this girl, she's got the hair eh, like that. So you know they don't know the word curly. So you see, basically, you don't have to be interrupting. You don't have to be telling them what they don't know. But you take your notes and you can see, well, this guy, his vocabulary is maybe basic because he doesn't know this, this, this and that. Okay, or um, what would you do things? I love to do them. So with photos, of course, I've got photos there. Um, if you had to choose, would you be with, um, would you be in a house with neighbors with six dogs or six pets? No, six dogs and six pets are the same. With six dogs or six children, right? So students going to say, if I have to choose, I will choose, mm, and then you see that they are not using the second conditional properly. So, well, they are not um, high intermediate, you see. So you can kind of, with this, um, it's, not, it's not really a game, but with this kind of interesting activities, you can really check their level, right? So you take notes, you don't have to tell them. And I use this note because you don't want to, to generate frustration and oh, this is wrong, you know, this word is the first lesson. So you take your notes and then you use these notes to prepare the first real lessons. So for example, um, I had a new student last week and I realized she had a big, big problem with uh, plurals and she had a big problem with second conditional. So I started the lessons with her this week with these two topics. And I always tell them, we are going to start with the weaknesses because of course, I want you to get better at the weaknesses and then we can move on to more difficult things. Okay, so use this creative test. If they are, I love when they are advanced students, for example, because of course you can create more original creative things. Um, so sometimes I put sentences that are very difficult to understand. Um, the noun is used as a verb or things like that. And they go like, oh my God, I can't believe, yeah, I couldn't say that. So they get so impressed and so surprised. They want more. You see, they want more. That, that's the feeling they, they've got if you are creative and original, okay? Number eight, are they up for a challenge? Very important thing. Try to read your student's personality. So as I said, of course, we are not psychologists, but teachers, we do have to have this um, understanding on how the personality affect, affects the students. So if you realized that during this first test, this person was very shy, oh no, I don't know, and a person with no hair, I don't know. If you see, this is an anxious person, she's very nervous maybe, or she's very shy, or she's got this trauma, you know, you are not going to be showing challenging um, activities. Okay, the first month, let's say, of course, then you can build up um, confidence and you can have more like a relationship and everything. Um, and of course, you can, you can add things to your list of activities. But some students, they love challenge. Some students, if you put like riddles or very, very difficult things, they love it. Some of them, they get frustrated. So try, try to read this person personality try to see if this person likes to be challenged or not okay and number nine very important one anticipate problems and be ready for questions why do i say that because things happen and yeah they do happen um and you have to be ready to deal with them so um, things that might happen, I've got, for example, I had students in the past, they were two people taking lessons at the same time, they were friends. One had amazing internet, internet connection, the another one, no. So it, it was a trial lesson. So should I talk to one and not to the another one? So you have to be ready for this. You don't want to say, oh guys, I'm really sorry, your internet's not very good. So yeah, um, I can't, let's do this another day. Don't leave it for another day. Okay, so this is something that I learned 
And it's a very, very useful advice. Don't leave students, don't let them say, okay, no, so today, of course, if they have to cancel, it's all right. But you telling them, oh no, so this is not working properly or you know what, well, let's do it next week because next week they will be with another teacher. We are plenty, you know, so they can just go and choose someone else. So for example, with these two guys I, I've had, they were friends, one was having problems and another one was not having problems. So I said, you know what, let's do something. Let's just do half an hour, half an hour individually so I can know you better. So of course that was not my idea, but you have to improvise. So basically, oh yeah, so it's even better because I can see you individually. So let me call this girl first and then I'm going to call you. And if you see you still have problems, we can do it today, later today. So amazing they thought wow we are special because she's taking the time to be with each one of us so very good anticipate problems things that might happen sometimes you know students if they are taking online lessons they are at home sometimes you know their child is going to invade the class sometimes their wife their husband is going to be shouting so there are loads of things that can happen the background the noise um in the background so anticipate that and very important, be ready for questions because natives and no natives, you know, we don't know everything. That's true. So it might happen that a student asks you a question that you say, oh, I've got no idea. So especially if it's a very specific phrasal verb or maybe, I don't know, like a strange, very strange grammar structure, sometimes you just don't know the answer. So you have to be ready. You have to know your material. So if you are going to show them um, a vocabulary or a photo with medical terms, please do your homework and know all medical terms that might come up with the, the photo. Yeah. So, of course, if you are teaching online, this is a bit easier because you can always have your phone close to you. And if you are looking at the camera, you can be looking at Google at the same time, but you don't want to be there. You, you, you don't want to do that. You want to pay attention to the student. OK, so be ready for questions, especially about the material you are showing. Right. So anticipate these questions and be ready to improvise in case something happens. OK, and finally, so you can. Oh, my God. Yeah. So finally, number 10. Obviously, this is the first thing, actually, but I'm assuming it's a bit obvious. So you all you all done it before. Check your webcam, audio and the Internet connection. There's nothing worse, nothing worse than a first online lesson with bad Internet connection, especially if it's the first lesson uh, is the first online lesson for that student. So it's the first time they are trying online. And then after five minutes, you go like, oh, sorry, you were frozen. Oh no, I cannot hear you very well. Yeah, so this creates um, a very stressful situation for them because they don't know if you can hear them. They don't know if they are going to understand you because they have to pay extra attention to listen to you. So check your webcam, audio, internet connection, all the essentials that you have to have to be an online teacher. And if you are not online, if you're a face-to-face -face teacher, just check you've got your materials, if your slides are working, if you're, if you're going to use a TV or um, an audio, if they are working properly, because there's nothing worse than a not prepared teacher, okay? So that's very, very it generates um, a feeling of frustration. And of, of course, students are not going to come back because they are going to say, well, I feel very bad. I couldn't hear her. I couldn't understand her. You know, I couldn't see her very well. So the camera was blurry. So this is basic one of the basic, basic things. And well, I think with all these 10 things, you are set to have an amazing trial lesson, okay? Usually I talk about prices, you know, fees, rates, everything before the trial lesson. So I can make sure they are not going to run out after the lesson because of the price, okay? So make sure 
you have everything clear from the beginning so you are not wasting your time because of course you prepare for this lesson you invest time and you invest passion and everything and then you say how much you're going to charge and they <laughs> so try try to do it prior hand okay and that's it my dears i think we can do a great job retain these students be happy enjoy teaching and peace and love that's it <laughs>